Many people have asked me why I had these boxes. Why did you want them? The answer, in addition to having every right under the Presidential Records Act, is that these boxes were containing all types of personal belongings, many, many things, shirts and shoes and everything. But for the moment, let's go to Philadelphia and speak to Susan Sullivan, a professor of law and politics at Temple University. Always great to have you on, Susan. I'll ask you something subjective a bit later, but let's stay objective for the moment. You're a professor of law and politics. Did it appear to you that actually his legal team had written those first 15 minutes? Well, if they had written those first 15 minutes, I think his legal team um, are going to need some help. I think what became very clear uh, from a legal perspective um, and having spent hundreds of hours in courtrooms was that this was a very bizarre rant. Um, um, Mr. Trump was quoting statutes and talking about cases and um, citing the Constitution um, and um, basically a very haphazard uh, rant, uh, the kind of rant that we are used to hearing, but certainly not one that had any um, cohesive le uh, legal, um, uh, presented a cohesive legal strategy um, or even a cohesive defense. The thing is, he doesn't necessarily have to convince any legal experts or indeed potential jurors in his case that is upcoming, for which he's appeared in Miami. It's almost as if he is addressing the court of public opinion, of course, Susan, and his supporters may not have the same legal expertise as professionals. So when he says stuff like, he had every right to hold those documents which he's accused of holding illegally and that presidential papers are not the same as classified documents. It doesn't sound to be legally on point as far as I know. Well, I think you're absolutely right. It doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be legally on point. And as you say, it doesn't have to be accurate. The people who are, um, who are at the um, ballroom right now, his supporters, are going to believe him. Um, we're used to Donald Trump making all sorts of false statements. Uh, ironically, that's one of the charges in the indictment that's just been brought. But no, you're absolutely right. His supporters are going to believe him. They're not going to um, question his veracity. They're not going to question his knowledge. Uh, they've never done that before. We have no reason to think that they will now. Uh, when it comes to a jury, um, and we're uh, probably at least a good year uh, away from that, um, then that will be a whole different story. Uh, but what can happen between now and that um, year, year and a half, uh, remains to be seen. Did you, Susan, hear what uh, former Attorney General, Trump's Attorney General William Barr said a few days ago? Because he was addressing the issue of Trump supporters saying that actually let's compare his case, as Trump has done in this speech, with those of previous presidents who had documents. What William Barr said was that, first of all, Joe Biden and Barack Obama, they never uh, tried to obstruct the recovery of those documents and that those documents were only being held until their presidential libraries could be built. And William Barr was saying that this is very different because classified documents are not the same as presidential papers. For example, most presidents, they write diaries. I met Vladimir Putin on Tuesday and I told him this, and that becomes part of history, but it's not part of government decision-making. So I'm not sure if Trump supporters are either ignoring those facts or don't know them. Well, I did um, um, read what Thomas Barr had to say, and uh, he was a very close ally of Donald Trump while he was in the Trump camp. As Attorney General, they were very closely aligned. He was extremely supportive. So it was quite striking to read uh, what he had to say uh, with such vehemence. Um, I mean, he really uh, tore into um, the former president. Um, in terms of the difference between um, classified documents, presidential papers. I, I, you know, I'm not that familiar with the subtle nuances. I certainly know that when documents are classified um, as secret or top secret and they are so designated, it becomes pretty clear. Um, certainly the uh, specificity in the indictment of specific documents uh, that, um, that the special counsel identified um, had nothing to do with what one would think of as presidential papers. Um, and, you know, in the, in the speech, Trump was talking about his personal belongings, um, his clothes, um, his personal items. You know, the FBI is not interested in his personal items. Nobody's interested in that. This is a serious issue um, that Trump is 
um, treating as though um, it has no substance or it has no um, merit, whereas in fact, um, you know, the gravity of this um, you know, cannot be um, understated. Um, the first time a former president is arrested and charged with federal crimes, um, this is significant um, and raises many, many issues. Okay, let's get on to some more subjective issues here. I was just wondering how dangerous you think it is when Donald Trump calls the United States a fascist and communist nation under the presidency of Joe Biden and says Joe Biden is the most corrupt president in this country's history and that he's destroying democracy. Those kind of words, in terms of how it affects his base, what does that do for US society? Well, I think it's um, subjectively, um, I think it's disgraceful when um, somebody would use that type of um, inflammatory language about um, a president who's duly elected and how um, you know, the former president still continues to um, deny the results being, um, uh, being accurate. Um, we have seen what Trump supporters can do. We saw um, what happened on January 6th with the attack on the Capitol. So um, you are absolutely right that there is, um, you know, his words have consequences. This is not a case of sticks and stones, might break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words do hurt here because uh, many of his supporters can be fired up. Uh, they can become violent. Um, they are impassioned. It's almost cult-like amongst some of them. And so to use that type of language and to um, incite that kind of uh, hatred for the sitting president and for the country itself is, is very damaging. He sets himself up as a victim of Joe Biden's personal dislike. That's the way Trump is setting this whole thing up. And yet when he talks, and he talks the way he talks, how far does it push US politics towards becoming something that is based on personal prejudices? And again, you could point the finger actually at Donald Trump here because he says if he gets reelected next year, he's going to open an official investigation into Joe Biden and Joe Biden's family. And that seems like a personal prejudice. At the moment, whether Trump supporters like it or not, this case, this particular one, is following US law. Well, you talk about Trump uh, presenting himself as a victim, and you're absolutely right. Uh, Trump likes to play the victim. Trump likes to point to the corruption of uh, the Justice Department or the FBI or indeed the uh, sitting president. Um, and to some extent, this type of investigation and this indictment is firing up his base. This is feeding into his persecution uh, complex. The idea that there is, as he often uh, talks about, a witch hunt, um, the fact that he was impeached twice, uh, but that both times he was found not guilty, that, um, that plays to his base. And it is very dangerous, um, and it does become personal. Uh, the um, Department of Justice is not the personal arm of the president. Uh, this is precisely why the attorney general um, selected an independent prosecutor to uh, investigate what had been happening with these classified documents, how they'd been retained, um, how they'd been concealed. Um, and how the investigation was being obstructed. So yes, uh, Trump does like to make this personal. He does like to present himself as the victim. He does like to fire up the base. And he will continue to use this prosecution in the next, um, next two years during the election cycle. Um, we will see this up front and center as we fact uh, we did tonight. He's used uh, the day upon which he was, on which he was arrested and uh, charged with federal crimes. He's now gone to a fundraiser. Um, he has his adoring crowd, uh, and importantly, people with millions of dollars to donate towards his election campaign. Yeah, and he certainly collected millions of dollars after that court appearance in New York. Susan, as I said, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Personally, I haven't spoken to you for quite a few months, so it's good to touch base again. Susan Sullivan at Temple University, thank you.